Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 21st, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Sometimes vulnerabilities are so simple that you kind of wonder why nobody came across them earlier. Well, maybe someone saw it, but uh, didn't speak up. The problem here is what has been referred to as the summer of SAM vulnerability. SAM and system hives are typically only readable by the administrator in Windows, but starting with Windows 10 1809, which was the 2018 version of uh, Windows 10, these registry hives became readable by any user. Now, you couldn't read them directly. There was still some additional security here that prevented reading them directly, but the volume shadow copy of these hives, that was readable by any user, and that's sort of how an attacker could gain access to uh, these registry hives, which means an attacker will have address access to hashed passwords, which then of course could easily be brute forced. Volume shadow copy, well, it's a great feature. It sort of automatically creates backups. That's basically what the problem is here. And it's enabled automatically if your system disk is greater than 120 gigabytes, which well is pretty much any modern system. Probably the simplest fix here is to disable the volume shadow copy service, which will prevent these copies from being created. Of course, you have to delete existing copies. Be aware that this, of course, removes that safety layer from your system, so you better trust your other backups that they will be sufficiently granular, where if you mess up a configuration, you could easily undo this. And server versions of Windows do not appear to be affected by this problem at all. At this point, I haven't seen anything official from Microsoft regarding this problem. So there may be some other workaround, but I would uh, wait for Microsoft's uh, advice here before changing permissions on these hives. And yes, Windows 11 beta is affected too. I believe that's actually sort of how this was originally found, of course. Typically, a beta version is not really considered all that serious given that it's probably still being refined. But that's then when people started to look at some of the older versions of Windows and found that exact same problem. And well, uh, let's go back to Print Nightmare, the other big uh, Windows vulnerability. Of course, one of the issues with a Print Nightmare was that printer drivers are executed as a system. So short of being able uh, to inject your own malicious printer driver into a Windows system, the next best option is to exploit a vulnerability in an existing uh, printer driver. Sentinel Labs took a closer look at HP printer drivers and found a pretty straightforward buffer overflow vulnerability in one of HP's printer drivers that apparently has existed for the last 18 years. And of course, as a result, the list of printers that would have installed this vulnerable driver for you is pretty long. The root cause here is a simple, straightforward string copy that, of course, is always a dangerous uh, C command to use. And here the user controls the length parameter, which, of course, then allows for pretty straightforward exploitation. So check up on your printer drivers and while you're at it, uh, maybe take a look if there are some printer drivers installed that you no longer need. Uh, typically they're only installed, never really uninstalled uh, because it will definitely extend your attack surface. And with all uh, the attention being spent on printer drivers these days, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, more vulnerabilities in different manufacturers' drivers. But enough complaining about Windows. We also have a new privilege escalation vulnerability in Linux. This one affects the Linux file system layer and it would be exploited by mounting a file system with a very long name to a Linux system. Of course, often users are allowed 
to mount file systems like USB sticks and so on. So it's certainly exploitable in many default configurations by a normal unprivileged user. Here the root cause is yet another very typical mistake. It's not a string copy, but instead a uh, unsigned length is being assigned to a signed variable. And then you have that usual signed unsigned conflict uh, that leads here uh, to the buffer overflow and in the end to a privilege escalation vulnerability. This affects pretty much all current uh, Linux systems. For example, Ubuntu 20.04 and later as well as Debian 11 and Fedora 34. But being a kernel vulnerability, this will probably affect all other distributions that use uh, similar kernels. But who needs privilege escalation if you're able to execute code as root directly? Fortinet fixed a vulnerability in its Forti Manager and Forti Analyzer products that enables a unauthenticated remote attacker to execute arbitrary code as a root. This is a use after free vulnerability, so exploitation, typically not that terribly difficult, but no exploit available as far as I'm aware. And yep, uh, probably don't want to expose these systems uh, to the public internet. And if you are using actually 40 nets, 40 gate product, they now have a signature to protect uh, their products from exploitation. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if there's anything I can improve for anything else you want to let me know, any sources that I should include here, please uh, let me know. Just use the contact form at the United Storm Center. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.